Welcome to the Under Center Podcast presented by St. Xavier University. We are welcoming back, all right, one of our triumvirate, all right, Eric Strobel, new boss man up at NBC with his promotions. We're welcoming back to the show anytime we're fortunate enough to have him join us, especially because we need our technical guy, you know, our analytics yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard you guys the other day referencing that, and I was like, oh, if only I'd been there to go on over the cap. <laughs> we managed. We figured it out. I know. Somehow I know. You guys, found a way. you guys did well. You did well. <laughs> And of course, you can always find the articles by Alex Shapiro on our My Teams app at NBC Source Chicago. Um, look, we got a lot to get into since the last time we were here. Stuff started really breaking the last time. We have to we and it's funny, I I had to check my notes because I yes. thought we went over like the, the Larry Ogan no Ogan Joby stuff, which I think he was one of the guys that you've been mentioning a lot, Alex, over the last couple of weeks. I feel like I heard him kind of coming out of your mouth. You know, we have the guard center from the Packers, Lucas uh, Patrick. Or he got signed Tuesday. Of course, we have we, – we don't know. I, and I saw your article, Alex. I, we, I guess maybe he's the middle linebacker, and then going back to when we were sitting there talking with, mm-hmm. with Alex Brown last week about what will happen with Roquan Willie transition the weeks out of Willie still stay, stay at Mike. Uh, you have uh, uh, Patrick Skills was re-signed. And then we have the releases that we'll talk about a little bit later. So one I think most Bears fans have an affinity for, Danny Trevathan, was released Wednesday. Uh, Mitchell Kubisi got signed. Uh, James Daniels, of course, he signed with mm-hmm. the Steelers with Mitchell Trubisky. And Bilal Nichols, of course, signed with the Raiders. And then somebody I think we all wanted to keep, Jakeem, Jakeem Grant, went to the Browns. Yep. And uh, Artie Burns followed Sean Desai to Seattle. So, uh, and Eddie Goldman, all right, was released on Monday. So that's just to give you an Slow idea. Slow news what's... week. Yeah, just, just a few <laughs> items. Oh, and Cleo Mack was traded. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and Khalil Mack, of course. Officially, oh, did. That, you know that was the last. I, I meant thoughts. that the trade went officially through. Yeah. Just and uh, he got word, introduced. Word, word. Obviously, we we did an episode on that. That was not new news, but he's in Charger baby blue, and he's talking about the 2018 Bears in the past tense, and it's just like, oh man, this is this is something. This is real now, right? Like it's once he's introduced, it, now it's real. So just to add that official finality on top of all this other news, just like man. A lot of change, a week of change for the Bears, no doubt. What were your thoughts on the Mac trade, I, uh, uh, Eric? I don't, rem- I don't think we had a chance to get your opinion on Khalil Mack being traded. True, that's a good charge. point. You guys did an awesome job uh, hopping on and getting that emergency show up. That's the the true definition of the need for an emergency podcast. Yeah, <laughs> is when you trade your uh, hundred and whatever you may forty million dollar man, right? Uh, I I think I see both sides. I understand people being upset because. Khalil Mack is arguably your best player. It's 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 him or it's it, there's not a, it's a short list. Let's put it that way, and he's on it. So I understand the the uh, dismay or the anger or the up the upset nature because when he's right, damn is he good, hmm. and he's an he's an impact player, a difference maker, and the Bears will miss him in the short term. But Definitely. but there is a but. He's on the wrong side of thirty. He's owed a lot of money. And the Bears are not going to be good anytime soon. If he if he has good football left, and I sure hope he does because he's a joy to watch, that's not going to be when the Bears are playing meaningful games, most likely anyway. And this is this is not new. I'm not espousing anything, any new positions here. This is just how I'm approaching it. And it's very clear, and we'll get into the rest of the stuff, that Ryan Poles really did not think a whole hell of a lot of this roster when he mm-hmm. took over. Mm-hmm. And there's only a few things you can do to really shake it up, and that's one of them. And give yourself some flexibility and try and uh, free up some some cap space for for all these other needs that you have. And, I mean, we've been talking about it, right? Like, Mac or Quinn, it makes a lot of sense if you can to move on from them maybe now more than later because, yeah, you might eat a lot. And, yes, they're eating a ton of dead cap this season, but they're free and clear. 2023 and beyond from his massive cap hits and that's i think a huge part of why they did not get maybe more draft compensation back because the chargers are taking every penny of Mm. that deal off the books so you now have two second round picks more draft ammunition is not a bad thing um i will miss watching number 52 uh that day where where that that labor day weekend that friday when that trade broke I'll, i'll never forget that day and running into the studio to do a quick stream show with uh uh, with Lawrence and Alex Brown, just the, the, the possibilities were endless. And unfortunately, uh, 2018 was the peak. I mean, you could argue that the first game of yeah, 2018 the first was half. the peak. The first half of the, <laughs> the first, first game of his of career as a game. Bear 
It seemed and like anything was possible. I don't want to, and I don't want to say everything. <laughs> it's true. It's so R-K-G. true. RKG. RKG. <laughs> <laughs> anything uh, is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> um, I don't want to say everything was downhill from there because it wasn't. He was still very good and had his moments, but the last two years in particular, he's really been fighting through it injury wise and obviously had to go on IR finally this year and, and get that foot taken care of. And like I said, I sure hope he's right. And he's out there and him and Bosa are just wrecking for the, the, the chargers. That division is insane. There's going to be some really Oof. fun football played in the AFC yeah. West. Um, but I think this makes sense for the bears personally. I don't, I think initially th- there's that shock, right? Like, Holy Khalil, Oh my God. But the more I looked at it and the more I think trying to think along what the lines of what Ryan Poles is looking at, I think it makes, it makes sense. And it's just, this is, this is what happens when a dispassionate evaluator comes in and takes over and really evaluates what needs to be done. He's not a, there's no attachment. There's no sentimentality. And that's what's happened with a lot of these cuts, Eddie Goldman, Tariq Cohen, Trevathan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he's going to remake this roster as quickly as he can. And this clearly was one of the major steps for him at least in this first year in accomplishing that so it's a complicated feeling as a bears fan but i i ultimately uh come down on i i I think i get what he's going for and it it might hurt in the short term but i think it will help long term can i push back on one thing that you said though please do you said that you don't think the bears are going to be competitive for some time and i don't think that that's necessarily true to be honest I think with the addition of Larry Ogunjobi, and we don't know what impact he's going to make, but the fact that they are already getting guys in place that really fit Eberflus' scheme, they do have a couple of top 50 draft picks. The fact that, you know, we're still at the beginning of Justin Fields, the beginning of his growth curve, and we don't know who the wide receivers are going to be right now, right? in the middle of March, 2022, (laughs) they don't have any wide receivers, but they don't play games in the middle of March in 2022. They have Darnell Mooney. I need to, I'll push back on that. Darnell Mooney is right. Okay, sure. They have Darnell, but but my point is nobody else. And Daz Newsom. And Daz Newsom. Newsom. I thought, listen, I thought you were being facetious because I was kind of with you because the Daz Newsom, we still don't know what we have. So, because you, usually you have it and you didn't say Daz Newsom. I was like, you right, E. He has to prove himself. We can't say Daz. <laughs> like, we got Daz Newsom, damn. And I'm not dissing Daz, but still. It's an unknown. It's an, yeah, unknown. it's an unknown. He's an unknown. But by September, they're going to have wide receivers. And we might be surprised by who that is, right? They might have gotten a really solid guy mm-hmm. in the draft. They might have signed a free agent like a Will Fuller. That's a question mark. And maybe Will Fuller is healthy for the first time in his life. I was about to say, man, I, <laughs> we just got off of an injury train with Khalil Mack. I'm just saying, I'm just saying we know middle... how great he is, but Will Fuller has been letting me down since he left ND. All right. So right. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting on that train. <laughs> maybe a bad example with Will Fuller. But my point is a playmaker, like, a playmaker. We don't even know what the 2022 room looks like by 2023. When, you know, that's going to be another class of free agents. It's going to be another draft. The Bears uh, will have a first round pick again. Yay. By then, by <laughs> then, by right, by March 2023, things could look really different. And we know turnarounds happen really, really quickly in the NFL if you got the quarterback. And the Bears think yeah. they got the quarterback. So, really, to me, everything is the same in terms of if Justin Fields is the dude. I believe that they still can turn around things very quickly. There are a lot of pieces and there are a lot of holes, right? We talk about wide receiver. We talk about safety. We talk about cornerback. They figured out the three tech. They, they believe, but you start finding those pieces now, putting them together, building a foundation by 2023. Why can't they be competitive? I I don't disagree with you whatsoever. I guess what I did not articulate was I think as currently constructed with Khalil Mack, that probably wasn't going to happen because of the the contract and and that mm. now you get out from under that with a, a guy on the back nine who's dealing with injuries. That's just what is that's the facts on the ground right now. It frees you up to now not necessarily this season because again a lot of dead cap. You're still getting some savings, but not all thirty million or whatever. You can still go into this free agency period and say, and and structure deals knowing that in 2023 and 2024, you now have some more flexibility. Um, 
So I think because they did this now and pulled the trigger now and ate this dead cap now, it can help them be competitive sooner. Whereas had they kept him as good as he is, we'd we've seen this movie before. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is just big picture. What we've been talking about for months is that they're finally moving money from the defensive side of the ball to hopefully the offensive side of the ball. And I don't think that I, I'm pretty confident that they, that that's what's going to happen. Be, maybe not necessarily today or tomorrow, but eventually that's just the way the NFL is going. So it allows them to do that. Potentially. We, we can't know what's going to happen. We don't know the future, but I think that's big picture. What I guess I, w- I didn't articulate well the first time as good as Mac is the roster is currently constructed. Even if they had added a piece or two, it, it's it's a band aid at that point. Yeah, and yeah. this this version of the team had run its course, and he was a big part of that. And it's not necessarily his fault that things didn't go right, but I think it was a necessary move to really move into the next era. I guess that's that's my point because I don't disagree with you. We've seen in the NFL time and time again. Twenty eighteen Bears were not good in twenty seventeen, <laughs> right, and yeah. every year we see new teams make the playoffs who were not even sniffing it the year before. So it's it's a hundred percent fact what you're talking about but i think this gives them that chance to maybe maybe not necessarily in 2022 but in 2023 really come out of the gates firing in let's be honest a weak conference so right right and uh, and this too we're looking for sustainability because we don't want to that you brought up a great point eric as far as 2017 2018 then we just say 2019 we're looking to where three out of four years this is basically a playoff team and maybe one of those years they don't make the playoffs because the teams in their division are better yeah. you know what i'm saying but i i, I want to get into the larry ogan joby but before we did that just because of what you said alex real quick guys i want to know your thoughts on trying to fill out this wide receiver room with some of the guys that have went off the board my my beloved dj shark is going to the lions all right for a one-year deal so that 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 kind of made it even worse for me right <laughs> it was like, but it also let me know that teams perhaps didn't value dj as much as i value dj shark you know what i'm saying so if ryan pose and maddie refluce and ian cunningham don't view him like that that's how they don't view him i know that perhaps a guy that you know i, I think maybe you mentioned him alex is a, a Juju Schuster Smith or Juju Smith Schuster. How are we going to do this? <laughs> you got it. You got the same thing. Juju no, Smith. it's always Juju Schuster Smith for now. <laughs> He's going to have to earn that respect. No, but <laughs> you still. <laughs> No, you still have him out there. And it's funny just going back and forth, talking to some guys on Twitter. Um, I guess I wouldn't be upset. I still just don't know, for me, from the guy that had AB on the other side and the guy that's somewhat, and this isn't a big deal, you know, acting somewhat immature. It's easy to, to, to mature from the little stuff he was doing. He wasn't doing anything off the field. But what are some of the guys you're looking at? Like, I like Alan Lazar, but the Packers put a second-round tag on him. You know what I'm saying? So what are some of the guys that you guys – view as because we're i don't think we're looking for a star to come in here we're looking more for bodies not just anybody like last year they just went and got bodies but you're looking for bodies that will help but also i think kind of set the tone in the room particularly maybe for some younger guys and that's with darnell mooney probably taking a, a higher step up in the leadership in that room too regardless of who you bring in because he's been on the team longer and he's such a diligent worker alex well with the big names coming off the board and even some of those mid-tier names coming off the board, I don't know that they necessarily need to take a big swing. They probably are looking at a one-year deal, a guy to just bridge the gap at this point, and then maybe reloading in the draft, whether that's with your second round pick or your fifth round pick, you know, just getting more young wide receivers is helpful. And then maybe just kind of filling it out with other guys I mentioned Will Fuller, right? <clears throat> you obviously, Push back on that. I'm just looking at. I'm just fantasy. It's, just, it's all because of fantasy, Alex. It's all because of fantasy. <laughs> the talent is there. He's got yeah. the talent. No we've doubt. We've talked that. about. We've talked about Juju Smith Schuster. I like Juju. Um, oh, dear. names like Zach Pascal from the Colts. Sammy Watkins is like an interesting veteran, veteran, pro, fast pro guy. Dude. Yep. And I know he's like kind of a boomer bust guy where he has big games and kind of disappears. But you want to talk about a guy who can take. The top off of a defense. Um, how about Odell Beckham Jr.? Nobody's there. nobody's taking a chance on Odell, Odell Beckham Jr. yet. But he would be here so late when he would be healthy. Sure, I yeah, mean, in all fairness, I'll give you this. Yeah. If you were to sign him, and one, I guess now Odell having won a championship, maybe looking for money, you know what I'm saying? But if you were to sign him to two years, I would probably be okay with that. 
because he shouldn't even come back to like week 10, probably. If that, I mean, he blew his ACL in the Super Bowl. That's February. But we just had this conversation about are the Bears really getting ready for 2022? Are they really getting ready for 2023? And if you offer him some sort of a three year in betweener deal, again, kind of backloaded. Who knows? Interesting name. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily banging the table for them to go out and get a deal done for Odell Beckham Jr., but it's, it's an interesting name to it's consider. Just interesting. Yeah. In 2023, there are lots of very interesting names where maybe you take your big swing in 2023. We're just pulling this list up right now. Guys who are set to hit the open market, and we don't know. These guys may not even ever sniff the open market because of extensions, mm-hmm. franchise tags, etc. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say some names. We know it's, it's not pretty- Calvin Ridley. But please continue, because he was supposed to be coming up next year, too. But please continue, sir. How about Tyreek Hill? Do he do anything for you? They're about to resign him, though. I they're was going to say, there's a lot of rumblings about There's a lot of rumbling yeah. that they're talking about giving him over 20 mil a year right now. There's a lot oh, of rumblings go. all over the league, right? There are a lot I of rumblings. I don't think Kansas on. City lets him get out of the building. Probably not. Again, so so they're, again, these are names. You mentioned- Matt Nagy will not let him leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll throw Nelson Aguilar out there. My dude from USC, who I think is a solid – oh, Strobel's, Strobel's yeah. not – No, I'm totally Strobel on here. I'm totally He's Strobel. Guy. He's fine. How about Brandon Cooks? Does Brandon Cooks do anything for you? Because mm. we would have to trade – don't you can only hold on to Brandon Cooks for like a season or a season and a half, and he must he, be traded? A, like, he is goes – Is that in the agreement? Are those the, yeah. Are those the, uh, the, the rules? Sterling yes. Shepard. So, again – there, there are names. There are other guys where obviously this market is going to be reloaded next year as well, where since you didn't get an Amari Cooper, since you didn't get a Chris Godwin, right? You didn't get mm-hmm. these top flight dudes. Why not take a few, few guys on one-year deals, two years deals, fill out that room as the bridge to either next year or next year's draft? And again, like, okay, there are reasons why all of these names I just listed aren't the sexiest of names. And I'm, I'll am i own that. I'll own that. But but again, we, we've got the draft coming up. We've got next year's draft as well. You, you don't need to find, in my opinion, your slam dunk X number one wide receiver right now. Oh, very true. And real quick, total tangent. Whenever I hear the reason I was like, eh, Nelson Aguilar, I just remember the Philly newscast where the guy who was like out of the fire who caught a baby or something was like, <laughs> a good thing I didn't, I don't have the hands of Nelson Aguilar. <laughs> just one of the funniest local news. Like, thank God everyone was okay. But like, just out of the blue, ethering an eagle receiver. It was just so Philly. It was unbelievable. Anyway, but um, in this season, Sorry, we we keep going on this Nelson Aguilar track. I'm just saying that season with Derek Carr and the Raiders, he was legit. I mean, that was a legit connection, and then it kind of disappeared with Mac Jones. I have never some really got fans on the same who are page. not a fa- friends of mine from the Boston area, Patriot fans, not fans of Nelson Aguilar. Find your Las Vegas yeah. friends. Find your Vegas friends and see how they feel about <laughs> Nelson Aguilar and the fact that let me Nelson pull out Aguilar my Rolodex. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> receiver has been an interesting market to watch this year. Let's let's reel it back to 2022 for a minute. Cause the Jaguars just dropped a few bombs in the marketplace and just, I think completely upended the rest of the league and let and the rest of the league took a step back and was like, let's let this settle because mm-hmm. the contracts they gave out to Kirk and uh, Zay Jones, Jones were just like, Nice players, don't get me wrong. Like I, I, I like them both, but but <laughs> it's like a hundred million plus combined for those two guys, and it's just like my goodness. And it felt like the receiver market ground to a halt for sixteen hours or so after that, and it was just kind of a weird kind of uh, in between space that we didn't really see any receivers going off the board. And then of course we see Gallup going back to the, the Cowboys and, and yesterday, Chris Godwin, who I'm a big fan of, even though he like Odell is coming back from a late season injury, gets a nice deal. Good for the bucks, taking care of their guy. Right. Um, but there's still some interesting names out there. I mean, shoot Smith Schuster. I, I do like, I think I, it, I think this really depends on how the bears view Darnell Mooney. Do they think he's their future guy like the guy and do they feel like they can just compliment him or they need someone eventually maybe not this season to take that number one spot in air quotes um 
Allen Robinson, I think the situation is very interesting with A-Rob because I don't think he's probably going to get what he wanted or what even he was offered that he turned down. Uh, what was that now? Almost two years ago, correct? Yeah. It was before the 2020 season. Am I misremembering this? Um, I wouldn't, I'm just intrigued at like if he, if he and Fields got along, new regime, the people he had issues or differences of opinion with are now gone. If he, if the market doesn't materialize the way he wants, one wonders if maybe there's a bridge to come back, maybe not on a long term deal, but on a kind of a prove it one or two year type deal, right? That's one I'm not necessarily. I'm I'm much I'm more uh, open to that or open to that possibility than I was at the end of the season. I thought at the end of the season, like gone, see ya, appreciate it, no shot. Now it's like, well, if things aren't really, you know, there was I think early in free agency, I saw some rumors that like Detroit was talking to him, his hometown team, and uh, then they go out and get Chark, and that the Chiefs were talking to him, but now you know that doesn't seem to have gone anywhere at least not now and also matt Nagy and him in the same building would be really yep. interesting um i don't know that's it that's an interesting one to me because it seems like last year went wrong for him in a lot of different ways and it wasn't necessarily that he's just lost the ability to play it just was a weird year in a lot of ways for him and a lot of other guys on the bears right so that's one that's just kind of uh it's out there and it's nice. just he's he's still floating and it's interesting. I don't know. I just I wanted to float the possibility and throw that name out there since it hadn't come up yet. If I if I was him, I would stay away from the Bears with the 10 foot pole just from this point. Sure. Because the fact that and we talked about this, I think last episode, the fact that he was rated as the number one receiver on NFL.com mm-hmm. and that he had such a, a down year last year. Why would you gamble on that twice and having another down year? Because still, yes, there was something with Nagy, but something didn't work, even if he did have a good relationship with Fields, Mm -hmm. that if you have down numbers again, that big bite at the apple may totally be gone. You have to. Yeah. He he needs to go up and put some numbers somewhere. Like so, even if you're going to do a prove it year, he should do a prove it year with the offense that's already humping. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah. I'm, I would I would love for him to come back. Don't get don't get it twisted, especially with the guys that are on the market. But yeah. for him, it's probably safer to go somewhere else. Hundred percent agree. Papers. Yeah, with Lamar Jackson. I yeah, mean, even at Marquise Brown. I think he's just. For him, it definitely feels like he just needs a change of scenery. Like it just right. things went wrong here. It wasn't like <clears throat> you know, any who knows whose fault it was, but like it just didn't end well. He didn't have a good year at all. Career worst sl- that wasn't an injury year. Just I, I that's what I was saying. I was anticipating a clean break. It's not even close, but I'm just saying with the way the no, market's point, going and the bears yeah, have need, they have a yeah, strong yeah. need. Who knows? The other name I meant to bring up, um, who was released was Jarvis Landry. I like that guy. Um, released by the Browns, formerly of the Dolphins before that. Just a reliable pass catcher, a volume pass catcher. Doesn't right. always, um, you know, break off the 80-yard TD but or 80-yard gain, but, like, really reliable pass catcher. And that's someone that um, – that's, that's the kind of guy use. you need, right? So yeah. that that, that, that guy actually – him, right. Jarvis Landry and Smith Schuster are probably the two most interesting names to me from the people that are left. Um, Beckham's intriguing. We talked about that. A Rob probably not just because of what we just talked about, and then after that, it really the list kind of, you know, drops off to the Sammy Watkinses and the Will Fullers of the world, where there's big question marks, right, with age and injury and, and all that stuff. The one reason I would lead towards that Will Fuller, Sammy Watkins region versus the Juju and um, Jarvis Landry vein of players, though, is. What have Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus told us? Chunk yards, explosive yeah. plays, basically. Right? When it's you speed. read between the lines, when you read between the lines, to me, that reads, take a chance on Will Fuller versus sure. go with the guy who, you know, mm-hmm. is your third and six. How about one of each? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, you're right. Honestly, you're right. They, they need to sign multiple guys. They're right. guys exactly. And I don't think guys. any of those guys are going to break the bank, right? Like, I think they'll they'll get decent money but not backbreaking money and you know bears need receivers i also think you brought up the draft 
deep receiver draft this year. And Alex, you've written a little bit about well, you that. You have to draft one, too. You, you have, have to draft, draft at least one. I wouldn't be surprised at least, if you draft I would two. I say two, but you have to draft one. And oh, it probably yeah. should be one of those second round picks. 100%. I'd be fine spending both of those picks on I a receiver. I wouldn't be angry. I wouldn't be. <laughs> only, see, the only thing, problem with that, because I'm with you, is I just feel like your chances of hitting on two receivers in the same round are so low that you almost be gambling that one of those guys aren't going to be the guy that you hope. But I'm, I'm with you. If you found value on those guys and you got the guys that Iberflu said and you, you just you got the receiver room out of the way in that way, but mm-hmm. you need a vet though. That that's one yeah. of those things. If you you they have to that, that's why I wouldn't be as mad at a Jarvis Landry, even though he doesn't fit the bill or the makeup as far as a player that can get you chunk plays. But I feel as if some of the things that went down with Cleveland with Odell Beckham. That, I, that he tried it to be the the, yeah. the, the sound the re, the sound of reason there, so I wouldn't mind a Jarvis Landry in that room uh, because I don't know if Darnell Mooney is that young man just yet. Um, but you need a you need a vet in there yeah. if you're going to have a bunch of young young men in there. It's, it's just my opinion. I'll be shocked if they get out of free agency without sh- without signing one veteran wide receiver. Mm-hmm. That would be a a pretty big upset as far as I'm concerned. All right, guys, let's talk about the big, the biggest signing so far, and that's the three-year deal for over four, for a little bit over $40 million, with 26 mil guaranteed to Larry Okunjobi from the Cincinnati Bengals, who was drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Listen, it answered the question. One, Bilal Nichols, of course, once we saw that, was not going to be retained and moved inside to play that three technique. Um, they went out and got a guy that got seven sacks on the interior last year, even though that was his first year of flashing like that. He had a couple of good seasons with the Browns, but that was his first year of really flashing with the Bengals, and he cashed in on it. The contract isn't prohibitive. I'm not upset with the contract. I like, and this kind of goes to what Alex was saying I don't know what the Bears are going to be next year. I'm not like you guys better be in the playoffs. And I don't even think they're structured to get in the playoffs. But with parity in an NFL, they could get into the playoffs next year. Like that just because, I mean, the defense, even if you look at the defense right now, it's not it's not torn down. You just collect, you traded Khalil Mack and you solved your interior problems. At least we believe so in Larry Oak and Joby. And then, of course, we think Matt Eberflus is supposed to kind of straighten things up and add more detail and take it to another level. But I'm happy moving in this direction that you're not going with, you know what, the defense is going to be bland this year, basically, as we try to figure things out, you're giving Matt Eberflus weapons on the defensive side to help that side while you're also trying to help uh, Justin Fields with the offensive side. So for me, it was a good signing. I'm still going to take a wait and see approach now that he's the man, man, and see how he acts with that. But the things you hear about his character make you feel as if that it's not going to go to his head and that, you know, they may have got a guy similar to the Keem Hicks situation where you got a guy, that's where you were going out. You Took got the words out of my mouth, man. I'm sorry, I apologize, sir. No, it's I apologize. great, it's great. You got a guy that you're, you, you signed that hopefully by next year, he's, and this wasn't, this was a contract better than what Akeem Hicks first got when he came from the Patriots to the Bears, but by next year, he, he's outplayed this contract, hopefully. So that's what I'm hoping for, but we'll have to take a wait-and-see approach, in my opinion. But go ahead, Alex, since I, t- I, I stole a little thunder from my man. I never ah. want to steal thunder from my man. Hey, we share thunder. Okay, we're a, right. we're a giant, beautiful thundercloud. Okay. <laughs> um, no, but it, you're absolutely right. You can compare it to that Akeem Hicks trade. It feels a little bit like that. Of hey, we're rebuilding this defense. We're looking for the guys who are going to be impact players, and we like what we see with you. We're going to not going to break the bank with you, but we're going to give you a solid deal off of what you flash. And then hopefully by 2024, they're like, all right, yeah, we got to extend you because turns out. You were an incredible free agent signing. Um, and seven sacks, people kind of scoff at the seven sacks from the interior. Tell him, tell him, Ken. That's a dog. That's that's crazy. That he basically had 12 sacks. All right. If we're saying he was an edge rusher, <laughs> that's like 12 to 30. Like from the in- dog, you get five sacks from the interior, you are balling the hell out. Seven and a half sacks from the interior. You know how di- I know we live in the Aaron Donald world. Do you know how difficult it is as an interior lineman to get that many sacks? Now? It's abnormal. Exactly. I-, I was going to say Aaron Donald spoils us all with exactly. his greatness, right? And we're like, oh, 11 sacks from the from the defensive lineman. Like that's normal. It's not normal. <laughs> it's absolutely not, not normal. normal. And I think this just goes to show how important that three tech position is. And it's something that we were talking about as far back as when we were talking with JJ, our old friend, JJ Stankovitz. He was laying this out, the three most important positions, that will linebacker, that three tech and the slot corner. And now, whether it's going to be Roquan 
or Nick Morrow, like they probably feel like they have that guy in one of those two players, right? Nick Morrow, by the way, um, intercepted Chase Daniel in that London game. Just side note. Oh, uh, yeah. Sea stroke. I can't remember that now. I can't remember that. But like, you're such an important piece of this team. <laughs> totally. The thought is not the same with totally. because – I didn't know that Nick Morrow picked off Chase Daniel. I, I didn't either. Somebody tw- shout out to whoever tweeted that into my timeline yesterday. <laughs> but hey, that's an interesting little tidbit. Um, I regardless, like he didn't play last year. He was hurt. They're taking a one year flyer on him, but he's he's flashed with the Raiders before he got injured. So they probably feel like between Roquan and him, they got something the at nickel, the will. They got the nickel linebackers out the way. I would believe right, and then they got they they went and as soon as you know pretty early on in the tampering period they struck and got their three tech and now they probably feel like they have the backbone at least somewhat formed of what this defense is going to be are there holes yes there are holes cornerback still a hole Set safety slot beside eddie jackson still a hole tyran matthew anyone tyran matthew would you do uh, that would you do that sure why not <laughs> because okay let me I, I i i want to sit on that one i want to bring that up how far are should they go in you your guys opinion now we'll leave with you eric as far as, because when you look at Larry Okunjobi, you can look at age, and I'm not saying that Tyron Matthew is old, even though he has he has less tread on the tire, I believe. Than Larry it's got Okunjobi. miles on him, yeah. It's not right. the age, it's the mileage. Yeah, exactly, especially with a, a safety that's as, as physical as as, yeah. as Matthew is. But like for instance, like how how good would he be if you sign him? I can see him still being a good player for the next three seasons. But when are you kind of stepping in too early into that window? Like, because I was like, man, they should sign Tyron Matthew. And I'm still not saying they shouldn't because I don't know what the hell Eddie Jackson's going to do. So you still need a legit guy on that back end. And they may look at it as far as we don't have a legit guy and let's get a legit guy while we transition away from Tyron. I mean, from Eddie Jackson, because that's that's my only way I'm really looking at like, well, it would make sense because you can't count on Eddie. And I know a lot of us want to hope that perhaps Eberflus can 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 reignite Eddie. But I just don't know if you can turn that engine on again to where he was before he got paid but so i was kind of up and down i love i always loved the honey badger so i was here for it but i just wanted to know your your guys opinion so please eric what's your opinion on that i say yes just because that'd be fun that guy's a fun football player you know what i mean and assuming you know let's let's be honest with the bears can't be paying crazy money to anyone really on defense they have their studs in place they need to save that money for roquan smith on defense because he's earned every penny of the forthcoming extension whenever that happens um if the money's right which is a big caveat but one that has to be said why not i mean i i had not thought about it in the in the way ken that you just brought up which is interesting of, of using him to transition away from eddie jackson i'm thinking of it in my mind more as could a guy like him reinvigorate or help mm, reinvigorate eddie one. jackson playing one. with a partner that is on his level so to speak and this is no disrespect to haha clinton dix or to sean gibson gibson filled in very solidly the last couple of years but really? he's just he, he's not on the same level as a tyron matthew when he's healthy and at his best he's just not there aren't neither there aren't is, many who are at that neither level, is right? eddie neither is Eddie. sure but that but that's my point is eddie has never played with a partner you're right of that Someone's level adrian amos his... probably clo- the closest right and they yeah. were a great tandem but right. I think, would you guys agree that Matthew is above better. Amos, better than yes. a, a better player than Amos, or no? I mean, yes. I think they're, I think they're close. I think Amos has really risen since he left the. Bears I think, too. I think, I think Tyrone Matthews is, is a better coverage guy than than Amos, but they both can bring thunder. I think that's how oh, I yeah. view it. I'm going to step in because I think Tyron Matthew is a very unique player. In that he was like kind of the one leading this hybrid safety. I'm going to come in the box, be a thumper type guy. Really, in my opinion, in the NFL. Now, maybe I need to watch some more safety video. But um, this is where, okay, I've gotten away from Matt Eberflus. I'm going to have a vulnerable moment and admit something. I've kind of gotten away from Matt Eberflus' defense tape to look at free agents and draft people. I think I need to go back. How and dare watch- you? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I need to go back and watch Matt Eberflus tape to see if Tyron Matthew actually would fit because in a cover two, you kind of want your safeties to be free yeah. range in the back the last line of defense. Right. And I think Tyron Matthew is probably best when he's getting down in there, mixing it up, whether it's in the box or he's like this hybrid linebacker type deal. This Troy Palomalu type of uh, safety, basically. That he's all over the field is sort of kind of like what you're saying. 
Yeah, he's everywhere. Um, and he's not always that last valve. So I need to go back and and I know that Eberflus did like bring safeties down and do some single high looks and stuff like that. I want to look more in like how prevalent was that? Can you have a guy who is just like everywhere and isn't always in the back, right? Um, and again, it comes down to like you were saying, how do they evaluate Eddie Jackson? Do they believe Eddie Jackson can be that last line of defense in those moments? Um, where yeah, Tyron Matthew is like a super fun player and hits really, really hard. Um, obviously has ball hawk abilities, which is everything that Matty Berflus wants, right? He wants that physical intensity, he wants people going for the ball to create takeaways. But it brings like a personality and edge to that defense. Yeah. But quite frankly, it has not had the last couple right. of years. All of those, all of those things, check, check, check. But I want to see like how how that like hybrid linebacker safety type deal could that actually work in Eberflus's defense? I don't know. Um, that's the only like little. I don't want to like spoil the parade because it would be very fun. But yeah. Well, that- you're 100 percent right. It, you got to make sure that with this new scheme and what he wants to do, it is a fit. It's just an interesting. I, I it, when it, when that happened, that release or that. I think he got linked by somebody to potential openings, and one of them is the Bears. And I was just like, my mind just wandered. And I was like, oh, totally. that'd be fun. That'd it be would really be. fun. It would be. <laughs> Maybe it could be similar and not not the, the same. They're not exactly the same player, but perhaps how Mike Brown was in Lovey system. Where, I mean, Mike Brown did play in a box sometimes in Lovey system, but we think about him more getting interceptions and taking them back to the house. But I'm with you, Alex. He may, you, you need a guy that's sound and is going to be where you expect him to be in this simplistic uh, defense that the Bears are going to run. And just from everything we've heard, going back to our conversation with JJ, going back to, you know, what you read, what you hear about this defense, I don't necessarily believe. I, I, they're all important positions, right? But I think a more important position is probably cornerback. Corner. We hear slot corner. We hear three tech, right? Where Tyron Matthew is going to get paid. He's going to get paid a lot of money. And I just don't know, are the Bears going to invest that money in a position that is not necessarily a premium position in Matt Eberflus's defense? Yeah, I think you're 100% right. I, I think it's more of a pipe dream than anything. I just... Enjoy living in that pipe dream. <laughs> I, th- I think I think you're I think you're right. Cornerback, whether it's CB two on the outside or the the slot, the slot, I, that's clearly more important to what they want to do. But I just don't think we can discount that that safety partner for for Eddie as well. It's all it all matters. All the pieces matter, but obviously you have to prioritize. And I I think safety will probably be lower than a couple other spots on that defense. And if they're only going to allocate X amount of resources because they need to do a lot of work on offense, then it's, you know, you got to you got to prioritize and you really got to figure out what's important on that side of the ball. I just thought it's a it's a fun name to bandy about and just envision. I think he'd be an awesome Chicago Bear. He just brings that energy and that defensive totally. swag that totally. fits in with a lot of what the last couple decades have been about on that side of the ball. But um I I would I much rather would see the those uh, funds invested on the other side of the ball and and get some weapons and some protection for for Justin Fields because it all comes down to him man it all comes down to him on both would, the, the whole thing and that would be especially in the cover to a lot of money allocated to safeties too when we still talk about Eddie Jackson's contract so but look mm-hmm. Eric you you talked about protecting Justin Smith and now we have a guard center in Lucas Patrick Justin Fields. Who, Thank you, Justin. You're welcome. Damn you, Juju. Juju. <laughs> Damn you, Juju. Ah! But listen, Justin Fields, you have Lucas Patrick signed to a two-year, $8 million deal, $4 million guaranteed. Uh, I guess one, where do you guys expect, Alex, where do you expect from him to line up? Is this, Will he perhaps be your new guard, or is this going to perhaps be your center? Because when you look at your article that you put out yesterday about uh, talking about how – uh, Ryan Poe's feels about these players that he brought in and he detailed how he thought basically leadership in all of the three of them in Morrow, Patrick and in Oak and Joby. I would think if he's going to be a leader, you know, they already have his position set and sound. Um, mm-hmm. So where do you think or believe he's going to start on that offensive line, Alex? Uh, well, honestly, your guess is as good as mine, to be quite frank. But my guess would probably be guard because they have tendered Sam Mustafer. I bet they will give him a few looks at center because he played uh, last season. I want to say he played the majority of the season 
at center for the Packers. But he has played left guard. He has played right guard. I mean, he's very, very similar to James Daniels um, in that regard, where he can play all three interior line positions, which is really good. Obviously, that, that's great value that you can bring to the team. But just looking at the line as it's currently constituted, you, you tendered Sam Mustafer, so you're bringing him back. He's a center. You just cut your right guard. So obviously, it kind of makes sense for him to slide into that right guard spot. But who knows? Maybe they talk to Sam and they say, you know what? We think you are a good player and you could develop into something, yada, yada, yada. If they make him the backup and have him a part of their depth plans, Lucas Patrick could be the center. Um, Aaron Rodgers talked about how important Lucas Patrick was stepping in as that backup center. I forget the name of the Packers center who went down with an injury, but Lucas Patrick coming in and it was being kind of a seamless transition. Aaron Rodgers. Josh Myers, Josh Myers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how, how important that was. And if Ryan Pohl says, Oh yeah, no, this is, this is our center. Like you said, then Sam Mustafer could be, you know, a, a depth guy, a depth guy, or maybe they'll work him at other places. Although that, that seems more unlikely to me. That seems much more unlikely to me. Um, so I, I kind of like sat on the fence there, but honestly, your guess is as good as mine. We don't know. We, we, we have not had enough time with Ryan Poles to know really what he's thinking, how he values and how he evaluates all of these positions. Um, so he, he could either, he could be in a right guard. He could be center. We, we don't know what's going to happen with Cody Whitehair either. Cody Whitehair is on the roster still. Is it, are they going to keep him? We don't know because a few of these cuts, right? A few of the cuts were reported a while ago. And then Danny Trevathan was just cut uh, on Wednesday. So there could still be, there could still be cuts coming. I would not be surprised if there were more cuts coming guys like Jeremiah Tochu, who I don't necessarily think fits in this defense anymore. So there could still be moves coming where, oh, actually, Lucas Patrick is our left guard because because Cody Whitehair is out of here too. Um, there's there's still too much to be done. Again, it's it's uh, March seventeenth. It's March seventeenth, so it, it's hard to it's hard to say where Lucas Patrick is going to play. By the way, I believe with the with the. Um... Pat O'Donnell going to the Packers. I believe Cody Whitehair is the longest tenured bear right now, which is kind of wild to think about. Um, I think uh, Ryan Poles is far from done on the offensive line. I think was th this was the first move of several, and I like the flexibility. The guy can play three positions pretty seamlessly. Started, I think, 28 games last two years for a really good offense and knows Luke Getze, obviously, and his system very well. So obviously there will be some new terminology here and there and some probably different concepts that are getting added in, but uh, he can you know, plug and play essentially in this system. That's awesome. And it sounds like he fits the exact profile of style of play and, and attitude that Ryan Poles likes. Um, there was one particular tweet that I really enjoyed uh, from Aaron Nagler, who is the, uh, on Cheesehead TV. He's an interesting follow, good NFL follow on Twitter. Um he said, the Packers have drafted a bunch of linemen recently, so it's understandable that Patrick moved on. But Patrick is a classic, quote, compete to the echo of the whistle, end quote, brawler, it. who yeah. could play anywhere along the interior. Sad to see him go. So Packers fans are somewhat upset that this guy's leaving. That's a good thing. And it, it was a pretty affordable deal. It was a two-year, eight-year deal. So if you can get a guy who can play three spots, maybe more, dependable maybe not quite a pro bowler but you know what you're gonna get doesn't rock the boat consistent performer that's huge that's what they've lacked the last few years it's just that's that safety net of competency you know when things go wrong on the line the last couple of years it's like oh my god what are we going to do our quarterback's going to die today like this is <laughs> <laughs> like serious i'm not even kidding like there, there are days where it's like how are we going to not be running for our lives on every pass drop back? So I think this is the first of several moves. We have no idea what this new front office and regime thinks of Tevin Jenkins, thinks of Larry Borum, thinks of Cody Whitehair. Clearly, they did not think too much of James Daniels because he did not get a ton of money from the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's essentially a one-year deal with options to, to continue on, but... He did not break the bank by any means. They could have easily matched that if they wanted to, and clearly they had no interest in it. Um, so we wish James Daniels all the best, along with uh, our old friend, another old friend, Mitch Trubisky in Pittsburgh. That'll be interesting. 
uh, to see how that plays out. But uh, I don't think the they're done on the offensive line by any stretch. Uh, J.C. Treader, center for the Browns, got released the other day. That's an interesting name. There's some connections there. Um, winding his way back to to Getzey, I believe, at some point a few years ago. And uh, as, as Sam Mustafer got brought up a few minutes ago, I think if he's your backup center, you are in a really good spot, like a really good spot. We've seen he can play center in the NFL. Is he one of the best centers in the NFL? Probably not, but he is. He belongs in the league. But if he's depth, I think you're in a really good spot. And because that's one spot where you can clearly improve a little bit on this line. And then you, you know, maybe you go out and grab a tackle in free agency and kind of allocate some capital there. And then all of a sudden the line's looking really interesting. Cause then it's like, okay, one tackle is your free agent catch. Maybe Tevin Jenkins is the other tackle. Maybe you can move him back to right where he's admittedly more comfortable. Is Larry Borum then able to slide inside to guard? Can he be a backup swing tech? Like then you start having options. So I think a long way of saying, I think they are far from done addressing the offensive line. And there's still some interesting names out there. There still could be some interesting cuts made. That would be yeah. intriguing. Other teams. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I mean. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Cuts made elsewhere that all of a sudden open up new possibilities for the bears. And I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the bears and Ryan Poles and his personnel department are keeping a close eye on some situations um, across the league with with various offensive linemen who maybe you wouldn't necessarily expect to be available but might become available. So I think they are far from done remaking that front that front five because, like I said a few minutes ago, Justin Fields is everything, and you need to make sure he is put in a be- the best position to succeed, and that starts with his protection uh, with those five guys lining up in front of him with their hand on the ground. Teron Armstead is going to be a huge job. Yes. Whether Deshaun Watson comes to the Saints and Teron Armstead stays or whether Teron Armstead signs with another team, it goes exactly what you were saying, Strobel. Where he goes, that is going to create a domino effect with that team, and then that move will create another domino effect, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, you're you're spot on, man. There's There's a lot to go here on this offensive line market. There's a lot to go on the entire free agency market. We're like four days into it. Right, everybody yeah. wants all the moves to happen, but we're four days into free agency. Real quick before we get out of here, as far as the Bears, former Bears players that were released or have signed somewhere, which guys kind of stand out, and what kind of uh, narratives will you be following closely next season? So we have, and Eric, you mentioned it. We have the new Steelers, all right, and and Mitchell Trubisky, and then uh, James Daniels, and then of course we have Bilal Nichols and a few other guys. But which guys, and Danny Trevathan, which guys really stand out to you that you're going to steal? One because you like them, but are just interested in what's going to happen next year. Um. I think it's Mitch just to see yeah. what he can do is in a second chance with a fresh slate and not with Matt Nagy, to be quite honest. And I think we'll finally be able to see, can he play or was it, was it him or was it Nagy or was it a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B? A little bit of both. Little I think it was a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, but I'm happy for him. He, he did. He handled himself well in a difficult spot as things went south and then Nick Foles got brought in. Like he, he kept his head up. He never complained, uh, at least not publicly. Um, and has gone, you know, it was a difficult situation for him, I'm sure. And then he took a a year off, essentially did not take the year off, but he, from starting, you know, he learns behind Josh Allen with Brian Dable. And I'm just intrigued to see, uh, if it's more of the same or if we see a new Mitch and, uh, I mean, and that's the one we'll be seeing the most of, I mean, if he's, if he's a starting quarterback, that's, it'll be hard to escape that, especially here in Chicago, what he's doing on a weekly basis. Um, but that, that to me is the most intriguing just because of the high profile nature of that and that decision and all the ramifications of what happened from trading up to get him to releasing him to et cetera, et cetera, or not releasing him, but letting him walk. Um, Yeah. I'm I'm just very intrigued to see what he does with his second chance. Real quick with me on the Mitch thing. I wish Mitch the best, but one for, for uh, Brian Dable to not bring him to the Giants and he had a whole year with him. And then the mo- I was always interested in this narrative that Mitch is about to get paid. And I'm like, wait, am I is something? Am I missing something? Because I'm sure he's going to get decent money, which I thought like if he if he made $10 million a year in a two year deal is what I thought he's probably going to get. I'm like, that's decent money because he may end up a backup or whatever. But people were like, he's going to get paid. And then we still don't know the details. And maybe I'm wrong and it may have come out. 
we still don't know the details. You got the details because you know if he blew that contract blew out the water, his agents would have put that that contract out there. We would have known firsthand. It was, uh, it was like two years, fourteen mil can go up to something like twenty five mil. Okay, okay. So I, I, this is my only this is my only thing I want to say before you jump in, Alex. My only problem with him going to the Steelers is how dependent they are on their quarterback to win the day for them. And I don't know offensively if they can switch around from, I mean, from having a guy in, 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 in and he was old, but in Ben Roethlisberger that won at this age could win from the pocket, not last season, the season, the season before they lost when they were undefeated. And then it was like, and, and they just tanked basically. I don't know if Mitch can do that, but maybe I'm sure they're not going to try to run the same offense they ran with big Ben, but still, I think, they need something from their QB that I don't know if Mitch can provide for them, but it'll be interesting to check out Mitch. I don't know if that's necessarily true for the Steelers anymore, especially when you look at last season when they were just getting the ball out of Roethlisberger's hands as quickly as they could. And then Najee Harris was a pretty impactful running back where if they make Najee Harris more of a focus of that offense, they still got a good defense, make Fitzpatrick and all them. Um where if, if they continue to say, you know what, we're going to have a simple on get the ball out quick, make the right decision, I don't see why Mitchell Trubisky and the Steelers couldn't find success doing that. You know, I doubt it. I doubt it. I'll push back on you, Alex. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It's, it's the beauty of it. As we know, Mitch does his best when it's quick reads, first read, get the ball out, right? If yeah. the play is extended or things aren't what they're schemed up to be, that's when things went south. So... If they can do that, you know, maybe he's got a shot, but his accuracy was never as advertised, you know, and that's that can be a problem in the quick passing game if you're not pinpoint. <laughs> that, not, not ideal. I'm, yeah. I'm getting it out, but it's going over there. The, the, the crazy thing, though, is I'm looking at his contract, and Alex, you, you already threw the details out, but he's going to be a UFA again in 24, and he's going to be 30 years old. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> like time is right, undefeated right. <laughs> it I just don't know the giants could have made a run at him but he is possible at mason yeah. rudolph and Dwayne haskins is like oh i'm gonna be the starter here well and, and you know oh, no, the, the steelers weren't one. paying a quarterback to be the starter at that time like rudolph and haskins have both been backups mm. daniel jones is, is obviously not on his second contract yet but he's a first on draft pick taking up significant capital at that position so maybe the giants couldn't justify saying, hey, we're going to basically going to pay two starting quarterbacks. Now, that's something the Bears have done before, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, and uh, or at least not paid, but, you know, paid a guy, then drafted a guy. Um, so who knows uh, what happened there? And maybe maybe Dable thinks that J Daniel Jones can give him what Trubisky could, could give him and more. We don't right. know. We don't know what his evaluation of that job was before he took it. I would so, probably take we'll Danny see. Dimes if I had to choose between the two, to be honest with you. I would probably take QBs. Yeah. I'm going to jump in on the free agent question just real quick um, because I want to give some love to Tariq Cohen. I really want to see him get healthy, and I hope he can get healthy. And I want to see that, you know, if, if a team takes a chance on him where he ends up, I want to see if he can be that impactful, dynamic weapon that he was for, for that one season with the Bears where he really was a Swiss Army knife. He was making an impact in the run game, especially in the pass game and in the return game. Um, and in the passing game, he threw a touchdown against the Ravens. At one we point. Reek, right? What was he? The smallest Bears quarterback to ever throw a touchdown or something? We reek. Um, so yeah, I I'll be keeping my eye on, on Tariq Cohen uh, as he continues his rehab and as he hopefully continues his NFL journey. That's a great point. I think it really gets lost in the shuffle how unfortunate that situation was and just bad. It's bad luck because, I mean, you think in this day and age with the medical technology available, somebody tears the ACL. Oh, it's a bummer. We'll see them next year. Like no question in your mind. Right. Like they will be back. Maybe not Adrian Peterson quick, but they'll be back. And clearly something went wrong, whether it was a setback or needed to go back in um, for more than a scope. You know, something went wrong and he's can't pass a physical yet and it's been almost uh it's been a year and a half of of uh time since that happened so i i i echo that heartily i hope he gets better and all those guys that got released or traded made significant contributions to the bears or played here for a while and it's just the nature of the business it's not for long right and uh that's just what happens we we, we expected this when a new regime comes in they they want their guys they want to put their stamp on the roster and 
that's uh, that's what we're seeing. But g- great point on Trico. And I think had he been healthy, he clearly would have been a part of the future on the offense here. And it's just uh bad break, real bad break. Um, and I'll just say honorable mention Danny Jabathan because of what he meant to the defense. But we got to get out of here. Um, look, it's great to have Strobes back. We can't wait for our next Strobes episode. Thanks, Strobes. Um, you can always check out Alex's articles. Again, he has a great article on Ryan Poles' thoughts on the new free agent. So check that out. Follow him on NBC Sports. I'm mean, Alex Shapiro, NBC Sports. NBC. I'm just messing up. Alex Shapiro, NBCS is what I meant to say. Man, also, check him out on The Rush. Either he's going to be the guest or the host. But you can always check him out at 5 p.m. on NBC Sports Chicago's Facebook page. All right, him and David Kaplan. Uh, Rate, file, review, hit us. We'll be back next week. And um, if you're going to bet, please use points bet.